Hey guys, welcome to the 10 day tennis transformation. So one of my longtime students, Felipe from Sao Paulo, Brazil, who's been working with me in person and remotely, had a lot of worries about his game. His forehand was gone. He had no confidence in it. His serve was gone. He started losing matches that he hasn't lost before and he simply wasn't enjoying tennis. So he called me up and said, Nick, I would like to come to Florida and train with you for 10 days. And not only did I agree to Felipe's request, but I also talked to him and we decided that we're gonna tape our entire 10 day training block and we're gonna present this training to you. Now, the way you're gonna benefit from watching this series of videos is maybe you are making some of the same technical, tactical mistakes that Felipe is making, but also this series might show you that hard work in tennis pays off. This is what I strongly believe in, that if you do the correct work on the tennis court, you get to enjoy positive results.
So here's my observations. I don't think you have a lot of kick on your second serve. Maybe there's a little bit of spin on there at times, but sometimes it's slice, but it's not a true like kick second serve. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you over hit, it's very easy to double fault. And it's not like you're hitting a second serve like a first serve. You do have a second serve, but it just misses because it doesn't have enough kick on it. The first serve, I think there's a little bit of a racket drop leak. You know what I mean by racket drop leak? Yes. You, you, go, you go in here a little bit early yeah. prior to unloading the body. There might be some isolated movements of the, of the wrist actually that's making that happen. I don't know if it's the wrist position or you actually are turning the grip, but the, the finish sometimes looks, looks wrong. It almost looks as if you're play, playing with a forehand grip, I already told you. So I think it's actually in this initial phase when you're dropping the racket, this is where there's a lot of wrist movements and it's, too un it's unnecessary, so we'll, we'll have to work on that. I think your biggest strength is your foot speed, your athleticism. It's unbelievable the way you run balls down. It it's insane. I do like your one-handed backhand. I think it's good. Your one-handed backhand is very solid. It's consistent. You can go cross-court. You can, you can straighten it out down the line. The return of serve, maybe it's like on the backhand side, it's probably the weakest out of all your backhands. The return of serve could be a little bit better. Yeah. But even there, I don't think it's quite, it's a necessarily a weakness. The forehand, I'm very worried about it because I was giving you different looks today. I was giving you some slice. And I thought you were doing well on the slice. But see, what a slice does, it naturally corrects maybe some other flaws that you have. So when the ball's lower, you naturally give yourself a little bit more distance here and you look less cramped and you naturally pull the ball up from a lower place and you get more spin mm -hmm. intuitively. So that, that ball actually looked really good. You also looked pretty good when I was giving you a lot of pace, you were just redirecting and using my pace. But on the balls where you had to do more and utilize your body more, that's when your forehand, it looked very thin to me. You know what I mean by thin? Yeah. It, it had a tremendous amount of top spin but no penetration. Yes, yes. So even when you hit a winner, I mean, sometimes like when you had the whole court open, so it didn't really matter so much, but it looked like there's too much of an isolated movement of your arm. The body is not helping and is therefore resulting in a, in a very thin contact, where it's just like, you're just kind of like rolling over the ball like this. Yeah. And it's not resulting in enough power. It's not enough penetration there. It's not heavy enough the ball. So to me, that is the biggest area of concern is your forehand. And there's other issues with like loading. You sometimes don't appear to be loading as much. I think your best forehand is when you run around your backhand. To me, this is where your body is naturally more engaged because you're already moving to that side and you kind of have a rhythm mm -hmm. already. So yeah. that's probably your best forehand. And probably your worst one is just a regular, not a slice, but a regular strike zone ball that's like between your waist and your your shoulders where you're not moving that much this is where i see like this too much yeah yeah what do you think 100 percent. you know sometimes you have a problem but you have a reason for a problem yeah and then another problems came from this it can happen problem. sometimes yes 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 what I absolutely think my forehand that the, this what make all the things happen uh -huh. is because i can't put pace in the ball uh, with low trajectory. It's always spinning. So, and then another thing starts to happen. There's nothing wrong with topspin, but the way you're making topspin is very weak. So let me, uh, let me run you through some drills. We'll go from there, okay? Okay, I want you to hit only four hands. Okay. And hit it anywhere you want. Max power. Go again. Max power. Go again. Okay, when you go max power, you take the middle point of the half. Okay. Take the middle point and then take the middle point between the, the baseline and the service okay. line. So right here, like if you make an X right here in the middle, okay. that's your target. Okay. On this side and on that side. Okay. And go hard right there. Okay. Right, here we go. Go again. Come on. Again. Come on. Yeah. Take a little breather. Here's what I'd like you to work on. I want you to accentuate the finish on your left side. So when you go here on this side, you're gonna, you're gonna obviously do open stance when you're done. I want you to end here. When you're on this side, it just depends on where you're going. If you're doing open stance, I want you to finish here. If you're doing closed stance, I want you to finish here. And I want you to hold the finish. But I want this finish to be very strong. I, I don't want it to be half because I feel like often it's, it's a half a finish. Okay. You know, there's just not a lot of um, continuing rotation on your forehand. 
It's like you rotate into the ball and then the arm kind of takes over and then that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I want you to accentuate the full body finish. Now let's see what happens. More. Give me another. See how you block yourself? You went, you went here. This is what's the end. Look, come around more. Look, you do close stance there. This, this, like this. More. More body involvement, more athleticism on the finish. Okay. More. Come on. Yes. And again, this side. More. Okay, okay, okay. It's a little too much. Give me another one. Come. Okay, good. And again. Again. Come on. It's a little too spinny. See, look. When you go on this side and, and you're, you're spinning like this off of this foot and you go in a circle, we don't want this. We want to maintain a wide base when you're done. So let's just say you're doing like semi-open but you're hitting off the left foot. I want you to maintain a wide base like this. Maintain okay. a wide base. Okay. Don't allow the body to, to over-rotate. Okay. And same on this side. When you go here, don't just spin like this. Okay. Now, I want you to accommodate the finish with the bottom part of the body. So when the racket starts going back here, then the, this leg comes around at the very end. Better. And again. Come. Better. And again. Come. And again, let that foot swing around at the very end. Come on. Okay, come again. Better. And again, come on. Let it swing. It's a little jam there. Come again, let it swing around. And again, come. Good. And again, come. Okay, good. Much better. When you set up for the forehand, I want you to be a little bit more loaded with the body. So make sure that your legs are slightly bent. You've got a wide base and the upper body is slightly bent down like this. So you're a little bit more aggressive position over the body. Huh. And again, all the way around. And again. Okay. So unfortunately, now when you swing harder, there's no control whatsoever. It's like, it's, it's, it's very flat, right? This is a very big concern because you don't have a good control over the racket head around the contact. So the ball is just very spraying everywhere, right? When you go max speed. So don't go like full speed, but like maybe 80% power. And let's see from there. Let's see that one right there. So when you go full blast, you lose control of the hand. The hand goes, goes here. You understand what I'm saying? No, sorry. So when you go, when you go max speed, like your hardest forehand, yeah. you lose control of the hand. Yeah. So your hand, your hand straightens out at contact. So it's like a slap. It's like... Like this? It's like this, look. Just go here and then go here like this. Okay. So that's, you can't really get the, you can't get it in that way. I mean, you get like one out of 10, two out of 10. It's just, so the hand has to stay. It has to stay here or it has to go like this, but it can't straighten here. So that's at max speed. So it's a very complex problem because like your corrective thing that you were doing is helping you a lot because you can get the forehand in. But we just have to get that forehand right. We have to get that forehand right. The one that goes in, we have to improve that one. Because this one not gonna work. That can't work. There's just too, too much movement around the contact. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, what, what I... So we have to play at 80% now, for now. Yeah. We can't go 100. We when can't. When I'm playing, what, excuse me. Yeah. It's because I can't hit the ball, so I'm playing. Yeah. Okay, here, BDG. Yeah. But I, I can't go and... Yeah, when, when you let the ball go, when you let the ball go, when you go full speed, the, the, the hand is just too unstable, it straightens out, and you start spraying the ball. Like this? But it's not, maybe not that extreme. There's a little, I see a little bit of a release there, and enough to lose complete control over the ball. Okay. Because here's the problem, like, when you miss the ball into the back fence, this is what I call a catastrophic error. So it's not like you did some small mistake. You did some yeah, fundamental. Yeah, you, you did a fundamental flaw. Yeah. And usually, on that type of mistake, usually, it's the movement here that just sends the ball shooting. Okay. So you get a tremendous amount of power, but you lose control because when you make contact, this has to be laid back. Okay. So you can have stability and control on the ball. If if you release right at the ball, it's like a slap shot. 
Okay, so what I'm asking you to do is the following. I, I'm asking you to like reduce to 80% so we get more of that what you just showed me there. Okay. But then introduce a little bit more of the body helping the okay, arm. Okay. So it's not so it's not happening in isolation. Go right here. We'll pick up soon. Let's finish this basket. Uh -huh. Same thing, core hand from both sides. So we got 80%. We need to control, we need to spin, but we're gonna have a full body utilization, okay? Better. And again. Better. Body helping the arm. Come on. A little too straight. More spin. Come around it. Better. Come again. Come again. Get in a good position. Come on. And again, Felipe. Come. You got this. All right, take a little breather. Way better, my friend. We'll get it right. Don't you worry about that, okay? We're going to get this right. You don't, wor you don't worry. Yes. I'm when you leave, you're going to have a forehand. I promise you. <laughs> When you get out of here, man, when you go back to Brazil, you're going to have a forehand. Nick. I promise you. If I have a forehand, yeah. I think I can win ATP, guys. Well. Because I was playing against Day. Right. But yeah. you had, like, you played, how many futures did you play total? Uh, eight. Ten. Eight futures. Yeah. And you won, uh, you went to the final of the qualies twice? Yeah. Twice. 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 Did you have any chances to make it to the main draw in the final of the quali? Was it like, did you have a three-setter or something? No, no, no. no. You didn't. I, I lose. You lost easy. 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 Okay, but like you're winning, you want some matches in the quali, which is a good, it's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and don't understand me bad. I am not telling that no. If I have a friend, I will be uh, 1,000 in the world. It's not right. this, but right. I can compete. Of you know? course. I can play in, in another level with yes. forehand. Well, That's what I felt that... I, like I said in the beginning, like, I think it's the serve and the forehand. If yeah. you can step the level up on those two shots, I think it's going to help you a lot. Yeah, yeah, A yeah. lot. Yeah. Here we go. Come on. Better. Come again. It's okay. You got jammed a little bit. Come on. Take your time. Come on. Body utilization. Full finish. Come on. Take your time and set up perfectly. Come. Better. Best one so far. Best one so far. I didn't put so much energy. Of, of course I do best, but here was just, it was easy. When the body helps the arm, that's when you feel the effortlessness. When the arm works by itself in isolation, that's when it feels like the arm is working overtime and that's, that's when it feels straining and it, it's overall a feeling of your body not helping at all. So that is the key, the body helping the arm. Okay. We're gonna get there. Here, you can take a basket. All right, you follow my lead. You do forehands, all forehands, okay? Here we go. Full body involvement. Come on, up, 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 up. Good, and again. Okay, Felipe, that's very thin, that ball. Very thin, and you stood sideways. It was like this. Okay. So again, I want you, when you aim, you're gonna aim right here, okay, on the other side. Either on this side or on that side. Right in the middle between the baseline and the service line, in the middle between the single line and the middle of the court. Okay. And full body involvement, you're going to load as much as you can. You're going to hit at 80%, so you can maintain your normal top spin forehand. And we're going to try to help the arm out, so the arm is not rolling over in isolation. Here we go. Come on. You find the ball perfectly. Come on. Go again. A little bit slower. It's too hard, Felipe. It's too hard. Slow down 10%. Come on, find the ball. Here we go. I want you to hit everything cross court. And hit on that dot where I told you. Come on. Okay, do me a favor. Take that cone, put it over there just so you have a visual over there to hit, okay? And Felipe, forehand, come. Forehand, go. Go, 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 go. Come on. Show me the speed. Show me the speed. Ah, ha, ha. You almost had it. So again. Cross court only, cross court only. Even though we got two cones, cross court only. Go again, wait longer, wait longer. Good, and again, come on. Better, come again. And again, come on. Again, Felipe, go. Another one, come on, find that ball. And again, come on. And again, Felipe, come, all yours, get up. Better. More body, you're playing with the arm only now, more body. Come on, more body on this one. Felipe, more body, come on. Better, body. 
Help the arm out. And one more, go. Okay, good. When I put my body to work, yeah. the ball takes a lot of spin. I don't, doesn't, we don't, we're not worried about spin. I, I try to explain to you what happens to you when you hit at the max speed. When you hit at max speed, the, the hand extends. So you cannot do anything but to play with a high amount of spin. Yeah. You, that's the only way you can play. Because if you play the other way, you, you, you can't get the ball on the court. Yeah. So you, your forehand, I think, just if I want to analyze it 100% correctly, like I think naturally is more of a slap shot. That's your, that's your genetics. But maybe even at the subconscious level, you know that to be true and you've always forced yourself, trained yourself to go more like this in order to get the ball on the court. Yeah. Because the other way, it just sprays all over the place. Yes. So if I understand right, my natural was to hit flat, but I try. I think naturally you're a little bit more of a flat ball striker, naturally. Yeah. Because like, how so. do we know what's naturally happening when we hit at full speed? Because that's where we have the least control over the racket. Yeah. It's more intuitive. The slower we hit, when we, have, when we hit from the mini tennis, the slower we hit, the more we can control the yeah. racket head shortly after contact. So whatever's happening at max speed is most likely what's genetically yeah. your type of forehand. Yeah. And so it's not going to work because unfortunately it's, it's, too, it's too sloppy. There's not enough control there. So you have to play with the way you play now. The, the only thing really we have to correct right now is that when you are applying topspin that it's not happening just by simply rolling over the ball like this. The entire body has to be involved. Load and then this. Entire body helping the arm go around okay. the body. Okay. Full body utilization. Okay. That's Come good. on. One more time. Come. More, Felipe, come. You're gonna hit forehands back to me, but all forehands. I'm gonna rally base on base on, you're not allowed to hit any backhands. Okay. And continue doing what you're doing, it's looking a lot better. Okay. Load more, load. Come on. Load. Go, Felipe. Felipe, I'd like you to load me a little bit too upright here, like this. Load more, load. Crouch, load. Okay, come on, load. Yes. Load. Come on, load. Load. Felipe, more. I don't like these, Felipe, I don't like them. They look, they don't look there's something missing. They don't look right. And what's missing is body involvement. I think. So when you're, when you're done with the shot, you're never, you're never like this. <laughs> this is a pro shot. When you look at pros, they finish here. You don't load, like you don't bend. It's very upright. And then when you're done, you're just here. So it's like a, a lot less range of motion than what you see at the high level. Okay. So more body involvement, more loading, more unloading. Let's okay. put an emphasis on this. Okay. Come on. When I try to hit with less speed, uh, natural, it's this hat. I will put more intensity. I understand that. I will Here we go. Intensity. Come on. That's the tricky part, controlling the ball. That's going to be tricky, but you can try. Yes. Huh? Go again. Up. Better. Uh -huh. Better. Better. Go again. Come on, Phil. Good. It's right here. Slap. Again. Full body. Better. Oh. Come, come, come. Oh. Come on, Felipe. Come on, Felipe. Again, come buddy, go. Body, come on, load. You saw how thin that was? Did you see how thin that was? Thin, thin. Thin, make it full, 
thick, long. Yes, Felipe, match point. One more time, match point. Okay, Felipe, that was better. It's a matter of just continuing along this path. We know exactly what to do. We know how to fix it. You know what's interesting? Your grunt came back at the end. A very, very important element of your forehand is when that grunt comes out naturally, that's when you're involving your body. And that's your real forehand. That was the first grunts I've heard today. Maybe you grunted a few times in a match. Okay. But in the drills, it was only at the very end when the grunt came out. Okay. okay. And I never tell anybody to grunt, but I want intensity, and that's when you play with the most intensity there. Okay. And more body involvement. Okay. So we have to build on that and continue going, okay? Thank you.